welcome. We've got three people here today to talk about the way things change. That's a reference to this morning. Yeah. Uh, Jody is here from the uh, uh, United Way. Okay. And sort of today. Okay, sort of. Okay. Jody more, Gray. more in support. Sort of, okay, Jody we'll get that all clear. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll take care of that. They never told me exactly what's going on. And um, okay. Dan Peter, no, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dan, Dan hated it. Well, you've done so many things. Sure, I mean, you're the too. Yeah, especially looking at chalkboards. Yeah. Um, but uh -huh. they, he's moved around a lot uh, from what, the top of the bank, and now you're going to go into a sneezy building. I don't know if we're going to talk about that today yeah. or not, but there are lots of new things happening. So we'll have them start now. And uh, let's start with a word of prayer. That would be it. Dear God, thank you for bringing together people who look at what's happening in your world and want to make it better in your name. Amen. Sure. Thank you. I'll, I'll start us off. Thanks for joining us this morning. Again, my name is Chris Shukai. I'm here this morning as executive director of the Hastings Public Schools Foundation. But um, And Jody is here not only as executive director of the United Way of South Central Nebraska, but as a Give Hastings Day planning committee member, as well as a Hastings Board of Education member. So she ties wonderfully into that. And of course, Dan, as the executive director of the Hastings Community Foundation, and we're starting to kick off Give Hastings Day. Um, we didn't really vote on who was going to start. I just did it because I felt like I was the most Presbyterian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. so, or maybe it was probably just I don't know. Uh, it, <laughs> If you leave with nothing else this morning, you should feel very good that the nonprofit community in Hastings, Nebraska works together wonderfully. And when I started the job at the Hastings Public Schools Foundation last July, these two were some of the first that reached out to me and said, how can I help? What can we do? And so we are always looking for projects to help each other with, to direct people that are in need to the various organizations that can help them out. And it really is just a wonderful, wonderful partnership. And I think you'll get a little bit of that today in our presentation. But I'm going to start by hogging up a little bit of time about the Hastings Public Schools Foundation. Wonderfully friendly faces in here. So many of you know lots of this already, but I'll share just a little bit about what we do. We are committed to engaging community, broadening opportunity, igniting innovation, and pursuing excellence. And we partner with the Hastings Public Schools to do that. But we are an independent organization with our own independent board. Now there is some crossover and we'll talk about that in a couple slides. Uh, our vision is to relentlessly expand the possible. So the tax base and what the district can do can cover some of the areas we as the foundation want to be able to provide funding and opportunities to do even more for the students and the educators of the Hastings Public Schools. So we are a 16 member board. The superintendent, Jeff Schneider, is also on our board, but in an advisory. But we have a liaison with voting powers from the Board of Education, and that is Sharon, actually, who is on there. Um, we have a halftime development director. In addition to me, I'm the first full-time director of the foundation. We currently now have $1.8 million in assets. In 2010, it was at $32,000. So this community has stepped up to make this foundation a real factor in, again, the students and the educators of the Hastings Public Schools. 88% of our source of funds are donations, 11% investments, and 1% our grants. There's our board of directors, lots of wonderful names that you know from this church. So I had mentioned at one point that what I have learned and loved about mission and helping came from the First Presbyterian Church and the people who came before to show the way with that. So thank you to this church for, for giving the, the direction to me on what serving really is all about. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Hastings Public Schools because that's sort of an important part of that. Jody, I don't know if you want to tackle that part. Sure. Or, yes, because there are struggles within the school district and there are challenges that come from that. And uh, that's where the foundation is also important. Absolutely. So we serve 3,500 students in HPS. 
And we have about 300 certificated staff, but our total staff numbers is uh, over 550, uh, closing in on 600 right now. Um, one thing that uh, isn't often talked about, but should be talked about a lot, is we have one of the highest rates of uh, free and reduced lunch population in the entire state. We're in the top 10 in that, uh, currently right around 63% free and reduced lunch. Uh, that creates a lot of um, challenges, but also opportunities for us as a district. Uh, and 23% are uh, identified as special education. 8% English language learners versus the state uh, at 7%. And 4% of our uh, student body meet the federal guidelines for being homeless, uh, unhoused, or um, currently unstable in where they sleep tonight. So um, all things that kind of, uh, when you put all that together, makes a very diverse population of students at our schools. And why that partnership becomes so important with what we can do out of some of yep. the tax base yep. also. Um, as we talked about, one of the things we try to do is engage the community, newsletters, social media, sharing the great things that the Hastings Public Schools do with the greater community. Our Spring Festival, many of you had the chance to be there. Thank you for being part of that. Uh, that was a few weeks ago, and we were able to show off the show choir, the jazz ensemble, and have a, a wonderful, wonderful evening with that. Um, broadening opportunity, then, is part of our mission, as you saw. We will award $78,000 in scholarships on May 6th to 38 different students. We also work with the middle school and the senior high food pantries, and those pantries are active. And as Jody talked about, as you sort of see what the population is and some of the challenges that the population has, those become vital. So we are a very big supporter of the food pantries. We also have allowed people and students to travel, thanks to the Elaine Lamsky Memorial Foreign Language Travel Fund. That was set up when Elaine passed away, and they provide stipends to foreign language students as they go on trips. Those had stopped for COVID, but they are back full speed yeah. now. Uh, and especially now, Hastings Public has gone back to a week-long spring break. Uh, and so they, a French class traveled this past year, and we have Spanish and German going next year as well. So we provide some stipends for that. Just a fun thing, as the father of a high school freshman, I got a text from Esther this week. Guess where I'm going to go my senior year? <laughs> Costa Rica. <laughs> and she, they announced it in her Spanish 1 class that if she stays in Spanish for four years, she's eligible to go to, on a trip to Costa Rica. And so in the, in the middle of my work day this week, I learned all about the uh, foreign language travel that Hastings High is doing. And Esther is very excited and is committed to doing four years of Spanish so she can go to Costa Rica her senior year. So yeah, great travels. Chuck, did you have? Well, uh, yeah. You're reading my mind. <laughs> you had a look. You had a look. <laughs> so it's back full speed. Is it? Is it really back? To what it was before COVID. Yeah, we did. There's a lot of other. I mean, the Rotary Exchange program. Uh, we're back, but we're struggling to to get the numbers. People aren't quite as excited. Some some of it is people. We, it's a mutual exchange. Yeah. Some of it is people aren't as excited coming into the United States mm -hmm. generally. That there aren't as many people interested in traveling out. Well, Jody could probably address. To me, it feels like it because there was just board action. Uh, well, coming up tomorrow, actually, that will approve the Spanish and, and the German trips. And again, we've just come off the French trip. So it feels like they're rolling, but yeah. numbers-wise, I don't know. We have a little bit of pent-up demand because those kiddos that uh, should have gone two years ago are just now getting the opportunity. So for us, we are back. Um, and this will be the first ones that we are approving. We approved German last month, and uh, the Spanish one will be tomorrow night. So. Um, but yeah, we're excited to to have those back so that kids can have that opportunity um, and be excited about something like that. And Chris, there are a lot of students coming from overseas to go to Hastings High. Mm -hmm. We've noticed a real uptick in that in the last two years. Our numbers of um, foreign exchange kiddos is actually up significantly so much so that our uh, high school admin team actually wasn't prepared for it. And it, it did create a little bit of a challenge for us at the beginning of the year. Um, but that's a good a good problem to have. But a lot of those kids that have, should have come several throughout the last couple of years uh, suddenly came this year. So um, we're we're happy to have them. But it, it did create a little bit of a um, challenge for us that they've they've now worked through, and it's great. 
Igniting innovation, providing funds so that educators and students can dream a little bit and those dreams can become reality. We do that mostly through what are called staff idea grants, and this is where educators provide applications to us and proposals to us, and we have a wonderful committee that kind of decides how we fund that. So we just did about $15,000 worth of funding for different staff idea grants, and some of those stick. And they stick really well. The middle school garden, Ted, you were just talking about that. Perfect example of that. That started out as a staff idea grant and now obviously has grown to this incredible community school partnership that every Monday night, if you have not had a chance to go to community night and they just started last Monday with community night and then had a special preschool night out there this past week with incredible opportunities for these kids, um, it is opening horizons for our students on so many different areas but what a great partnership out there in that middle school garden and right. the foundation continues to sponsor and help with that there is 150 incoming um kindergartners at the night uh this week and well that's you know we have, we'll have a lot more than that close to 300 incoming kindergartners but that means that they also bring families and that's just that building that community and the impact of that having all of those kiddos outside i mean you all know the benefits of this but outside learning how to garden but i mean they're learning how to garden they probably don't realize that but they're having fun playing in the dirt and running around and being with their friends but the the all of the benefits of that for the district but also for the community are just we we can't even measure those hey joe yeah. what was the numbers i asked the gal that was out there and we dumped the mulch <laughs> uh, but what was the numbers because uh, i said if we want to have this bring this bowl that the girl might have a cookout for and she uh -huh. said is that average you say 150 I mean that'd be big but is it she said 30 or 40. so yeah. that was that was a special night with just the incoming uh kindergartners on an average Monday night I'm not sh totally Sharon do you know how to speak yeah I would guess more than 30 or 40. Oh, um, yeah I would I would say probably closer 50 60 70 ish yeah yeah Great, great project, and all really in the spirit of outdoor ed that Will Lock started for the Hastings Public Schools and uh, taking seventh and what were seventh grade, I guess, right? Seventh we went, grade. yeah, seventh grade to Camp Augustine yeah. for an overnight experience that uh, for kids like me who <laughs> did not come from a camping family was amazing. And I later went up to Snowy Peak and uh, they, they journeyed to the source of the flat with Will as well. So amazing opportunity. So all in kind of the great spirit of that. Voice amplification is another project that started as a staff idea grant. That is basically microphones for teachers and setups in the classrooms for them. Um, not everybody has quite the loud voice that I do, but I don't think I would even after seven periods every single day. And so it started to help hearing impaired kids, but teachers and students found that there's so much benefit for every student. So that has also grown there. Uh, every classroom in the senior high now will have a voice amplification uh, system in there. And then we're working to continue to put those in the elementary schools and, and add to those as well. We also help vocal music parents, band parents, PTO. So some of the smaller groups within the Hastings Public Schools are kind of umbrellaed under us and, and we work with them. Uh, pursuing excellence then, and I see Kirk and Karen here, and thank you, the Norris okay. Swan High Ability Learner Parent Institute is Tuesday night. So we're bringing in Dr. Lynette Breedlove from Western Kentucky University to share uh, the five essentials of parenting gifted kids, and uh, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful evening, and we're also doing a faculty event that afternoon also with her also, so great opportunities. And then if you were at our spring event, you know that we uh, support Emerging Educator, Distinguished Senior Educator, and Educator of the Year programs. We team up with the Scottish Rite for the Educator of the Year program, but in addition to the honor, there are cash stipends for those educators. So it's a great opportunity to recognize the best that is part of the Hastings Public Schools. Then there's the big projects, and the foundation recently finished a fundraising drive to help renovate the Hastings High School Auditorium. If you have not had a chance to go see SpongeBob, please do. It is phenomenal. And when you see the talent that is up there on stage and in SpongeBob in the aisles as well, 
um, the ability to add amazing sound and lighting and staging opportunities with that talent is just mind blowing. It's really, really fantastic. So um, that was a wonderful project that again, I think started kind of the great partnership with the Board of Ed and the foundation in sort of dreaming bigger and how could we partner with get the foundation and the Board of Ed together on projects that the Board of Ed may not have all of the funding for, but with the help of the foundation, we could do. So with the successful auditorium project, we've moved on to renovating the playgrounds at all of the Hastings Elementary Schools. So when all of those were renovated, the buildings are in beautiful shape thanks to a bond issue, uh, but there was not funding in that bond issue for the playground. So we want to upgrade those at all of the elementary buildings. Morton, when that was redone, that did have some dollars as part of that preschool program there for the playground. So that has a new playground space, but the other schools do not, and it kind of widely varies between buildings. But we're going to focus on accessibility because throughout the district, there is not a great opportunity for accessible play. If there are students with physical limitations, they are very, very limited on what kind of opportunities those playgrounds provide for them. Some new equipment. Um, if you go on that uh, kind of fire pole jungle gym at Longfellow, that was there when I was there. Uh, <laughs> that may still stay there. Some of that stuff is still great, but we wanna make sure we're upgrading and getting some nice new equipment also. Uh, surface upgrades, you're gonna see lots of gravel, in some cases, lots of stickers and an attempt at grass, and we just need to really upgrade all of those surfaces. And then shade. It gets hot in those late August all through September, and now it's going to start to get hot in April and May also. So some shade opportunities for the students as well is kind of what we're looking for on each upgrade. This is Alcott. You can see that is gravel out there. And then all of this area back here where they had tried to start grass, there's just so too many kids over too little space and the district has tried and tried and tried to get some grass growing and it just does not stick around. If you're in a wheelchair, that gravel makes it inaccessible. And then around the play areas, they've got a lot of that piping that you're never gonna get a wheelchair over. You can see the condition of some of the equipment there and um, just the asphalt areas there at Alcott also. We are currently scheduled, I'm thrilled to say, to upgrade Alcott this summer with Lincoln this fall, uh, barring construction timeframes. That's our, our mystery right now. But uh, so we've, we've been fortunate to raise some really great dollars already for that. But you can see the need, the weeds in there and just making that a much, much better space this area here, literally sand burst stickers all over. So some of the process, and you'll see this in the video that happens is kids come running in. And one of the first things that has to be done in the classroom is they start picking the stickers out of socks and everything else. So that definitely needs to be upgraded. And here's just a shot. They're just trying to keep this area of shade the gravel out of there and kids actually sweep around and also now this I'm going to show a quick video here that shows kind of some of the need for this. Bear with me. The nice thing I love about recess is the fact that we can all get out here and just have a fun time. Just a simple thing. Recess isn't just fun for kids. It's good for their brain. After having recess, when students head back to the classroom, Studies show they're more attentive and ready to learn. Recess is so important for kids. They need to get outside, they need to run, they need to have time to play. Some of the district's playground equipment goes back to the 80s. The paint's falling off. And showing its age. There's supposed to be a glass piece on you. When I first started as the principal here, we had the beautiful Lagoli. And we were so thankful and the kids were so grateful to have the updated space, but then nothing was ever able to be done with the, with the outdoor space. This car right here is one that they love to play on. So there is cement underneath it and gravel underneath it. So it's not super safe. We've had three students break their arms this year. 
Playground safety is important because kids are going to fall. Through playground upgrades, we can literally soften the landing. There's people on the ground, so after they play out here, if you ask the child to go to the bottom of their shoes, they'll be a bunch of play candy. Does that happen a lot? We want them to love just to play, but when they're inhibited by having to stop and look at the ground, make sure they're not going to fall into a hole. A balanced beam for some is a barrier for others. There's no accessibility for kids in wheelchairs. Um, we have a student right now who is in a wheelchair and she just can't come outside for recess. And a carefree place to play benefits the entire community. Anytime I drive by on the weekend, it's just in the morning, right? there's always families over here playing. We can all do something to make things better. And I was a dreamer for the playground and for what they said for like, I know it's a huge task and a huge reason it's built and to the playground, but I think it'll definitely be worth it for these kids. It would be wonderful if we could upgrade some of our things to be happy if we want to. So that's the next big project. We are teaming up with the district. I'm going to see so what I can... Whoop, there we go. Um, it's a $500,000 project. So 250,000 of that will come from the district. We're trying to raise the other $250,000 of that. The good news. Now on that. <laughs> Shooting, it's working. Oh, the so well, yes. Delay for dramatic effect. <laughs> the good news. I'm going to start it all over here. Hold on. I knew trying to run that video was going to get me greedy here. Where's the also, can I add a comment, Chris? Yes, yes. You that about the the um, partnership between the district and the foundation. The district, as they mentioned, cannot do this for the playgrounds. Uh, we have some money that we can contribute to it, which makes the foundation's money go farther, but we can't do it alone. And that's why this partnership is so vital for our community. So, yes, the great news is we've reached now actually the 75% level. So wonderful donors who have stepped up for us. Thank you, many of you in this room who have helped us with that as well. Uh, now just trying to get to the home stretch also. So that's kind of the next piece that will happen. Again, we are planning to do Alcott this summer, Lincoln in the fall. We will do either Hawthorne or Watson in the spring. Lincoln, Hawthorne, and Watson have space that we can work on the upgrades while school is going on. Alcott and Longfellow, those spaces are so small, they have to be done in the summer. So Longfellow will be done then in the summer of 25, and then either Hawthorne or Watson, depending on which one we do in the spring, will happen in the fall of 25 if everything goes according to plan. So you can help by reaching out to us or get ready for the segue. Project Playground is our Hastings Give Day project as well. So you can give during Give Day and that will help the playground and that jumps us to Give Hastings Day. Well, look at that, how yeah. convenient. Hey Chris, can I ask you one question? Yes, please. Uh, something that way back when Roger Dorr uh, introduced me to was stocks that I had bought in the 90s that I could give and, and Dan's well aware of these is that I pass those on. But one of the things when I finally did a Hastings College um, uh, thing was Roger said, you know, fund this was a sale of building and part of the proceeds, but the, you had to get to an endowed amount. Have you got part of that foundation? Have you got something where I think at that time it was $20,000 you had to get yeah, to? 25,000 is sort of what we use as a, as a basis. Now we have some funds that are a little bit smaller and we're not using the spinoff. We're just trying to kind of build those yeah. up a little bit, but 25,000 is kind of the area that we use to give a spin up scholarship, staff idea grant, stuff like that. So we can generally pull about a thousand a year out of those while they continue to grow. So 25 is sort of that yeah. level. And then yeah. the second thing is, well, I think when I talked to Mike Karloff in there, I don't know if we actually have that at the church yet, where you actually can get an endowed amount that, that pays up perpetually. We do. Uh, is, there, is there that then? So it hits a certain amount too. So. Okay, but I, that's what I thought, because I think it's some people, I know there's some generous givers in here, uh, but that's really nice because it is perpetual then. I mean, yeah. You get to a certain amount in there and basically it locks in. And of course, Dan's ran me through stuff too. So I just want to make sure if you ever started something for that, how would you 
and then it'd be, I guess then it's, Dan, then you're going to talk about that. Obviously, it's donor advised, then, which I like, because you get in there, and when it gets there, you're, you can advise how you want to be used. And yeah, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, I didn't yeah, yeah, interrupt, yeah. I just want no, to. Okay, thank you, Will. If you have time, the 4%, now, the 63% or whatever it was, I'm not surprised none of us are. We've heard that. And the small districts out in the county like Silver Lake are actually similar. I saw that when I supervised student teachers out there. But the 4%. There's a homeless, right? The homeless. Yeah. Could you say a little bit more? Are these kids that you think are house to house different or in cars? Yep. All right. All of the above. Yep, couch surfing quite frequently at the high school. Um, we have okay. a surprising number of kids at the high school that couch surf. So they don't have a single home to sleep in at night. Um, we have great resources in our community, but if you're a high school kid, um, you know, going to Crossroads, for example, uh, just isn't very realistic. Um, we have Maryland Living Center across the street that does a really fantastic job at uh, helping with that. But, um, yeah, they're sleeping in their cars. Their couch surfing is the, probably the most common one, um, but they're unstably housed in some way. Any any children that you know of sleeping in tents under viaducts and close to the railroad area in timbery areas? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So that, so that's where my office comes in. Uh, I we have some, two central navigators in our office that are the ones that that um, help find resources, help connect, things like that, yeah. Do you know that law enforcement monitor that? that very, they monitor it very closely. They can tell you um, probably to the exact number who is where on any given night. It's a very hard thing to police. Yeah. Um, and it's a that's a fine balance. Um, Chief Story and I, uh, Dan, you were involved in a yeah. conversation with Chief Story and I, uh, on this topic, it's a it's a very difficult thing to to police for for our law enforcement. Yeah, but they they know exactly who's where. Yeah. And the, the challenge is we don't want to criminalize poverty. One hundred percent. And yep. so yep. the yeah. police step into a social service role as opposed yep. to a we're going to issue a citation or write you a ticket yep. or throw you in jail role. Yep. But it's 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 a very very difficult balance. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that that reminds me before we get into give day, just talking about the collaboration between yeah. our organizations. I was in a uh, board meeting for the uh, Community Impact Network. One of Jody's central navigators was saying, gosh, the real pinch point right now is gas cards. People don't have oh. money to get to work, get kids to school. Uh, so now kids uh, are missing school. They're out of school. People can't get to job interviews. It, Boy, this is really a pinch point right now, and I just said that, that that's something we can fix. You, you know, getting people gas cards is not an impossible solution. So I met with Jody right after that and said, "Hey, I I think there's a path forward here. The Community Foundation can help with that." She immediately stepped in and said, "Hey, I think United Way is happy to match whatever the Community Foundation puts in." And just because of that comment uh, from a central navigator sitting in a meeting. We came together and just found a solution to, to a community problem. And then I'll take that even a step further. Yeah. Um, then we went to our community partners and said, we have this problem. If we could purchase some gas cards, would you help us out with that? Hastings Ford said, you purchase 500, we'll give you 500. Coaches Corner supported that as well. So all of a sudden, our, that conversation, a little bit of an investment from the community foundation, a little bit of an investment from United Way. And we had a significant number of gas cards uh, with within a week yeah, easily. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna add on to that partnership even more. Um, Hastings is really unique in the fact that you have three nonprofit directors with a fourth sitting in the room um, <laughs> that are all up here talking together about collaboration. That doesn't happen in other communities. Most places, uh, I I wouldn't talk very openly around another nonprofit director, <laughs> let alone let alone three others. Um, <laughs> they're often seen as competition. Um, Dan and I talk at least once a day. Um, and that's not about social things or what we're doing for supper because we have those conversations. <laughs> but, but it's about, hey, I have this need. Um, hey, what do you know about this? Hey, we, I'm seeing this. What do you know? 
Um, same thing with Chris. I sent Chris a grant opportunity about two weeks ago um, that he didn't know about yet. So it's not competition for us. It's realizing that, hey, when we all work together, that's better for our community. We can solve a lot more problems when we're working together and collaborating more so than if we're all seen as competition to each other. So that does not happen in Kearney in Grand Island, I will tell you, you would never find the United Way director, the Community Foundation, and the Public School Foundation director in the same room presenting at a church together. It would not happen. They are all see each other as competition. When we do this and we all work together, it's so much better for our community. And Hastings is really unique in the fact that we can do that. So you're going to talk about Give Day, and I guess I'm going to ask a question about that, maybe, and you'll answer it. But um, <laughs> when we Started Give Day at the Hastings Community Foundation. Uh, you know, it, 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 we were among the people that were doing this, and it sounded like a good idea. But you know, I kind of wondered how it would work. And and as the numbers of organizations and projects grew, it's sort of like wow. But then COVID came, and my sense is that Give Day in other communities isn't either isn't there or isn't the same as what it was before COVID. Mm -hmm. Is that is that fair? Uh, and is that is that maybe a little bit a mm -hmm. part of what you're saying is that it's been it's worked here and been so successful mm -hmm. because of the comradeship, mm -hmm. the, the the ability for everybody to be in the same room talking about the same thing at the same time. Yeah. I also think it speaks to the community, but your instinct is right. Our, our Give Day website runs through a national vendor. They do Give Days all over the country. So they're able to provide some insights, some of which I'll, I'll talk about that are unique to Nebraska. But in having conversations, how are Give Days performing? They're, they're different times of year all across the country. Uh, the response is, well, uh, about half are, are, are doing the, the same or better than they were pre-COVID. Half the give days are uh, not at the level that they were pre-COVID. So, um, yeah, there's definitely uh, been a change since COVID on, on give days nationally. Yeah. So I will talk Give Hastings Day. I, I've got a, a, a little information broadly about the Community Foundation if we get there at the end, but wanted to focus on Give Day uh, that is coming up on May 2nd, but... The timing couldn't be perfect because early giving opens tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, culminates on, on May 4th, early giving tomorrow. 108 nonprofits, all local nonprofits, 100% of the dollars raised through Give Day stays in Adams County. So these are organizations from not just Hastings, but to other communities in, in our county. And, and Give Day really makes it easy to support any combination, whether that's one, whether that's 108, and any variable in between, the, the, the ease of give day is you can do, uh, allocate your gift to as many different organizations as you'd like and still write one check, still just have one credit card transaction. It's headquartered through givehastings.org uh, from the, the electronic standpoint. Uh, the paper, the administrative end is housed in the Hastings Community Foundation. So first 10 years were almost five and a half million dollars collectively on Give Day. And you can see generally every year has continued to climb. The last couple of years have exploded to uh, uh, just uh, to, to surpass that half million dollar mark, which is amazing. I will tell you the, the success of Give Day or, or the performance of Give Day is a variable even to us and committee members. We go into that day not knowing what that outcome is going to look like. And uh, I, I truly believe that the impact, the benefit of Give Day is not just the dollars. The, the dollars <laughs> raised are, are great, but to have an opportunity for 108 nonprofits to provide education, to make the community aware of, of what they're doing, and then broadly for the community to see all of these organizations that are working 365 days, not just on Give Day, but they're working all year round uh, on, on to serve projects, to serve people, uh, to serve our, our neighbors. I, I, for me, that really is the impact and, and the power of Give Day, although $5.5 .5 million is pretty impressive too. Mm -hmm. 
So, Jody, why do we do give day? <laughs> well, you said totally took my line. I normally <laughs> say about, about it's about more than the money. It's about um, helping our community realize that we have all of these amazing nonprofits in our community, and our community is better because of them. Those 108 uh, organizations provide services to our community through things like beyond just a uh, United Way Catholic Social Services, but the YM, the YW, uh, tons of different things. A lot of the um, different missions that this church supports as well, part of Give Day. So um, on Give Day, I kind of uh, set my United Way hat aside for just a little bit. And while we do raise money, uh, somebody in my office helps uh, that. And I put on a hat as a um, Give Hastings Day um, committee member and pretty much do whatever Dan tells me to do uh, <laughs> for the day. I did, I did. If only more people would embrace this out, <laughs> I, I really think the community would be even stronger. <laughs> he has given me a couple titles. I've asked for name tags and to uh, put them on resumes, but uh, so far I haven't seen anything official. But um, so uh, Give Day is particularly important and it's, it's put in a specific season for a reason. We do this in May. Uh, after the typical giving time of the fall season, the holidays, end of year giving, um, that's all done. That's when a lot of people were typically thinking about giving to nonprofits. We want them to think about it all year round. Uh, it also, uh, summer normally is a slower time for giving as well. So, but our nonprofits operate 365 days a year and they need funds 365 days a year. So we need to be thinking about giving year round and not just at the end of the year. Again, it's about that opportunity to educate our community on how important those um, nonprofits are. But of course, uh, it's also about the, the funds raised. All of the money, as Dan said, stays right here in our community. Um, we're also trying to increase the way that we talk to kids about philanthropy. Um, a significant amount of our giving is from uh, certain age groups. Um, but we need to start thinking about it across all generations, including our littlest uh, ones. This year, we're having a coloring contest um, to start introducing philanthropy to, the, to our, our littlest members of our community so that it starts to become part of their, uh, of their world as well. Um, it makes giving so easy. There's so many ways that you can support our, all of our community on Give Day uh, with one gift. Um, gamification, is that a word? We use it all the time in our office. Google didn't underline it when I claimed uh, it, so I think that means it's a real word. Okay, all right. I'll give you question your leader. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. I'll get my newest uh, newest title of snack wrangler taken away if I do that. <laughs> um, bonus dollars and prizes. Uh, we have a lot of sponsors that sponsor Give Day. All of that allows us to put money back in to things like hourly prizes and bonus bucks and really increase that, uh, the, the ultimate payoff that the organizations receive. That's more than just what they uh, receive from donors. There's also bonus on top of that. So there's like $60,000 in prize money, including a $10,000 endowment from the Hastings Community Foundation. And almost all but a, a couple of exceptions Eligibility is based on number of donations. So Give Day, we really want to incentivize the nonprofits just to, to get people to participate. It, it's not about raising the most money. It's about finding donors, just getting community support in terms of number of donations, not just the largest donation. So 2023 was a record year for us, $953,008 raised by Give Hastings Day, which is, is just incredible. It, it's fun to break that down and, and, and see some of the trends, what that looks like, how Nebraska is maybe a little bit different than other states. First of all, to get to $953,000 and change takes about uh, 1,676 donors who made a total of about 5,500 different allocations. So you can think about this as 1,600 people uh, and uh, for each nonprofit that they gave to is counted separately, totaling uh, just under uh, 5,500 donations, which is uh, uh, pretty incredible. This is what's interesting for us. 
the majority of dollars we raise through Give Hastings Day comes in through our door through cash and check, whether that's uh, uh, investment accounts, people uh, uh, bringing dollars, only about a, a third of the total raise comes online. I say that's interesting because, again, the website vendor we use for Give Day works on these kind of things all over the country. They said it's only Nebraska where that these numbers look like this. Every other state, it's reversed. The majority of dollars come in online. And I think that speaks to what Nebraska is, right? I, we want to do business face-to-face. -face. I, I want to give you my check. Uh, I, I, I want to do business with a person and, and not a, a computer. So I, I, it's just a, a fascinating anomaly that uh, I, I think really speaks to who we are uh, uh, in the Midwest. So when we talk about you can make a, a, a gift to as many nonprofits as, as you'd like, those cash and check donors are averaging just under five different nonprofits. If you're giving online, you're you're giving to about two and a half different nonprofits. Uh, you can't actually give to half of a nonprofit, so we'll round that up to about five and three. I, I will tell you that it, it is certainly not uncommon to see individuals give to 15, 20 plus different organizations. And what I like about these numbers is it's more than one. Give Day, uh, donors are really using Give Day to, to really explore uh, what's out there in the community, what are the needs, what are the organizations, and support organizations that are meaningful to them. So the fact that these are, are greater than one nonprofit, I, I think is uh, uh, another benefit of Give Day. So this is a, a little bit difficult to see, but you know, I, I mentioned that we uh, open uh, early giving tomorrow, and we do that a couple of weeks in advance to allow uh, people to mail a gift. I don't know if you realize this, sometimes the mail, a little unpredictable, so we want to give <laughs> folks uh, the opportunity to mail a gift and still get it to our office by May 2nd. We've certainly heard from population of people that said, hey, I, it is stressful to remember that I've got to make a gift on May 2nd. I really like that uh, I have an opportunity to, to drop it off earlier, uh, and we're happy to accommodate that. The early giving cycle also helps us create uh, a little bit of promotion and awareness and, and build some anticipation around Give Day. That said, what does Give Day actually look like? About 1,150 donations on Give Day last year. Uh, while we have two weeks leading up to Give Day, uh, uh, Give Day itself is our biggest day of giving. 370 cash donations, cash or check, brought to Give Day headquarters last year. We started this concept a couple of years ago where we're, we're stationed at the Lark all day, and people can come uh, uh, make a gift, learn about the nonprofits, have a meal, celebrate our success, just support it and cheer on Give Day. That has had some momentum. So interestingly, we actually have a team of accountants that are behind the scenes, uh, uh, eight to five on Give Day, working up uh, in the loft of uh, uh, the Lark, and they're entering all these hundreds of, uh, of cash gifts. And in, in the history of Give Day, they were done by five o'clock and, and great, uh, the, every, they were caught up and, and gone. Last year they left at five and we still had a giant stack of, of gifts to be entered. So that Give Day headquarters, has, there's certainly some momentum to that. And we've also extended the hours by which the accountants are entering yes. gifts this year. We begged and offered we, more food. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 780 online donors on Give Day last year. Uh, uh, so quite a few online, but 370 people walking through the door and making a gift on Give Day. When we say Give Hastings Day, is it full 24 hours of, of giving? It really is. So last year, the first gift, two minutes and 29 seconds into the day, uh, the very last gift, uh, uh, 11.57 and 7 seconds p.m. Uh, I ran into Troy Stickles from the YMCA this week, and he goes, I was just telling people about that time two years ago where I thought it'd be funny to make a gift at 11.55 uh, p.m., and as soon as I did, I got a text from you that said, cutting it a little close, Troy, and uh, so if you don't think I'm watching that to the bitter end to see who's coming in and... Who's going to play it a little close? Uh, we we absolutely are watching that. We're actually still sitting at the Lurk watching it. Uh, yes, yes. Still working yes. at, at 11.57 and, and 55 seconds. 
how, how many people do the sort of unrestricted for all just for you to divide up? Right? Yeah, so we started this a couple of years ago, a uh, support them all fund. So we have this prize pool of dollars from our sponsors that's really allocated in, in prizes in a number of different ways you can do that. We started a support them all fund where that's evenly split amongst all the organizations. And so whether you're a big organization, whether you're a small organization, you get the same share of that. Last year, I think it generated uh, about $80 per nonprofit. So 80 times 108. It's not monstrous money. I will tell you that that is huge when we talk about, hey, there's credit card fees and, you know, some of those things that come off the top when you do online giving that it balances out, you know, the, that 2%, whatever lost to credit card fees and becomes a big deal. Some of those organizations uh, are, are mighty small and to have an extra $70, $80 is, is really significant to them. Even for some of the bigger organizations, yes. that's, I, I count every 70 or $80. So I, I were appreciative of all of it. Sharon. In addition, that says a lot for people who say there's a lot of good stuff going on in Hazel yeah. and use my gifts. Yeah. So that's exactly why, why it came that's about that people came and said, geez, there's so many amazing ones. I don't know where to put my money. And this is exactly for that. Yeah, please. Yes. You give me your amount, you could get, could, can you designate a certain amount to this one, a certain amount here for three, say three big ones, and they'll say send the rest to every split it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, you can. Absolutely. Yep. Literally, any combination you want to make yep. of that 108, we can, we can do it. I appreciate the work that you guys do to get the letters back to us and tell us where it went. <laughs> <laughs> that takes a lot of work. I mean, it it does. It does. That many, that many uh, individual donations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna ad lib for just a second. I don't know that we that you cover that. Maybe you do later. I'll look, but I'll cover it. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to Dan and the Community Foundation who give this to the community. This is a monumental task to pull this day off. It takes the Community Foundation, his entire team, and then we have a committee of ten, I don't yeah. know, ten members ish. Uh, that have been meeting for months to do this. We will start meeting uh, more regularly. And then we all actually work for um, about 20 hours straight on give day. So it takes a huge uh, amount of work from the committee, but all of that is possible because the community foundation is giving us this platform to be able to do this for the community. So to the community foundation, uh, huge props and, and gratitude for allowing the community to do this. So Matt Fong. Question, I was curious then, how much money does the community foundation raise as a That's part a of uh, Give Day? I don't have a, if I had to, I don't have the spreadsheets. If I had to do the math, it would total zero. Uh, so the Community Foundation receives no financial benefit from hosting Give Day. It is a service that we provide the community. What a loaded question. Uh, I, I, I wasn't planted, but you must have heard me say that once or twice. So who to ask? I'll be uh, grateful for my Starbucks later Yes, today. yes. Uh, well, yeah. Not, you're, you're, you're too. We spend money. I mean, our budget on is fifteen thousand, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars for out of more than that, for out of pocket expenses put on give day mm -hmm. uh, and, and staff time for yeah. an incredible amount of staff time. So yes, yes, it's not actually zero; it's negative. It is yeah. yes, <laughs> even better, even better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I believe this is me. Yep. Um, so 108 total organizations are participating this year, including eight first time. So even though this is year 11 for us, we are still adding uh, new organizations. Some of these have been in our community for a long time, just now um, participating. Some of them have a specific project that they're working on, which is why they're participating this year. So in our home stretch of time, a, a few different community-wide events to promote Give Day. You may have seen beautifully decorated windows across our community. We started this last year uh, to honor the, the 10th year of Give Day to have a window decorating contest. It received so much great momentum. We have this voting uh, online through Facebook. Say what you will about Facebook, but it was uh, 32,000 people looked at these window uh, uh, pictures. So it, it was an incredible marketing tool for us. 
And because it doesn't require any work on our end, we said, let's bring that back. So uh, you'll see a number of windows uh, throughout the community. I think those have to be submitted uh, tomorrow. Uh, and then uh, uh, there'll be a, a, an online voting. Who painted the guitar? I was kind of thinking that ours was really good. And now I'm seeing these. I'm like, who did that? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, like, the music is it, those Hastings yeah. music. Uh, but <laughs> we're going to have to step up our game next Also, year. you have to smell backwards if you've been yeah, inside. It's, 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 it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing that requires thing. a lot more planning than just going and painting. Some community partner events. So starting tomorrow at Russ's and Allen's, you can round up your, your purchase at the register to the nearest dollar. Uh, through April 28th, you can also purchase a, a $1 or $5 give day logo. 100% of those proceeds go back to the Support Them All Fund, shared amongst all the organizations. Plus, you get your name somewhere hanging up inside Russ's. Coach's Corner tomorrow and then April 22nd, five cents of every gallon of gas is uh, donated to Give Day Support Them All. And then new this year it, it is Restaurant Week. We had a, a number of organizations reach out and say, hey, we want to do something where uh, uh, Proceeds from the day benefit Give Day, so we we formalized uh, Restaurant Week, uh, April twenty second at Pizza Hut, April twenty second at Baristas, Tuesday, April twenty third at Perkins, the twenty fourth at uh, all three Renzas all day, Freddy's on Wednesday the twenty fourth, From Bar uh, Thursday the twenty fifth, and Rivals Thursday uh, April twenty fifth. So I guess we have our meals planned. Yes. <laughs> Just, uh, and it's great to have that, that community support and it generates dollars, but it, it just helps build that, make big, makes Give Day into something bigger than just an online transaction. This really becomes a community-wide thing and something that we do as a community, not just something I do in front of a computer. And then last note on, on Give Day, please join us at Give Day headquarters. We are at the LARC. Uh, typically, we open at 7 a.m. Uh, I'll say KJS Radio is going to be broadcasting live from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., almost kind of telethon style. And, and when they, they presented this, I, I was very thankful. But in my mind, like, well, someone's got to open the lark at 5 something in the morning now. And this day just got like an hour longer. So uh, 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 just part of the fun. But uh, if you're available to come uh, by, we have meals, uh, we have breakfast, we have lunch, we have a business after hours, we have a, a live band in the evening. Uh, you're invited, families are invited, everything is open to the public, everything is family friendly. We have a big tote board where you can follow along the progress, cheer us on. There's a gong a ceremony that uh, <laughs> celebrates our progress. Every $25,000, the gong gets smacked. Mm -hmm. And it's just so really fun. I, for When Dan suggested this, I was like, you're crazy. People are that's going to drive you. Now we're all like, who's ringing the gong next? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so any questions about Give Hastings Day? I would just add, this is an incredible community day. The, the vibe, the... Um, celebratory atmosphere at the LARC on that day is just really fun to be at. Even if we are running on very little sleep by that point, it doesn't matter because it's it really is just so fun to be at. So if you need to come uh, have a drink or grab a donut or anything like that, I really encourage you to, to stop by, check out the band at night because uh, it's just a really great day for our community. In our final moments, I, I, I don't have time to do uh, Hastings uh, Community Foundation 101. This is like Hastings Community Foundation 001, the, the, the very quick overview on who we are, uh, what we do, our mission. Uh, first of all, uh, let me back up. We, we, we've been around for about 35 years where we're located in the second floor of Heritage Bank. While we've been around a few decades, people may not know where to find us. Uh, I don't have information on, on this uh, slide deck, but uh, as part of Give Day and, and a broader campaign, we are looking at a, a move into the Stein Building uh, in, in downtown uh, 2nd Street. So for us as an organization, our, our next chapter is to go from, uh, while the bank has been very generous with their support, just no visibility to be able to swing to a storefront in 2nd Street in downtown Hastings is absolutely incredible for us. Uh, by the way, that is a good day opportunity if you'd like to support. Uh, but as far as a community foundation, what we do, our, our mission is really focused on, on three things. Uh, creating permanent, unrestricted, and endowment to support our nonprofit community. 
We've had some conversation about that already today. In short, an endowed fund is uh, where the dollars are invested. They grow over time with the market. And just a, a percentage of that fund is allocated each and every single year to uh, support a project, to support a specific nonprofit. The principal balance is never touched. So literally an endowed fund creates revenue and perpetuity forever and ever. So we're, we're focused on that. Uh, providing a flexible philanthropic vehicle for donors. So whether your interest is supporting uh, a, a specific nonprofit, a nonprofit, supporting a scholarship, supporting community activities and initiatives. I, I, I like community art. I, I, I like children. I like you know the, these sort of uh, uh, broad categories. We can uh, develop a, a tool that helps you achieve your, your philanthropic goals. And then uh, uh, finally, even though it's cut off, uh, uh, acting as a leader for the local nonprofit community, give Hastings Day is certainly uh, uh, one example of that, uh, but there are many others. So about 150 different funds. What's fantastic is uh, the amount of uh, endowed funds we hold for our community nonprofits. So again, these are funds that create avenue, uh, annual revenue, rate of distribution every single year for nonprofits like the YMCA, the YWCA, United Way, the, the museum, the library, the, the community theater, uh, so many more uh, uh, that we're able to uh, host funds for. All of those funds have the uh, opportunity for additional contribution. So as we grow those, uh, they produce more dollars uh, to the uh, uh, supporting nonprofit. Our largest uh, endowed fund is actually our community grants fund. So this is a program operated through the Community Foundation. Annually, we, we distribute uh, about $130,000 to our local nonprofit community. But our impact as a community foundation is much broader than that. So in total, uh, we distribute annually about $3 million dollars through grants, scholarships, and other nonprofit support. So this is a whole nother uh, presentation in itself, all of the services, which uh, we, we don't have time to uh, get into. Uh, uh, Ted mentioned donor advised funds, which is certainly a, a growing area and can be a really neat philanthropic tool that also benefits you on the tax side. You can create a fund with the Hastings Community Foundation. When you uh, uh, make a contribution into that fund, you receive immediate tax benefit, but that fund uh, is invested, grows, and then you retain uh, advising rights. So you can advise on uh, 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 how those dollars are uh, distributed uh, to uh, uh, nonprofits in Hastings and beyond. So, and look at that, on the nose. Oh. Well done. Yes.